In this video, I'm answering all your questions about bristle nose or bushy nose plecos. What's the best way to keep them? What's the best way to breed them? What do you feed them? How do you raise them? How do you sex them? All that and more right now. Welcome to the fish cave. Hit that like button and make sure to subscribe if I answer your question. Also be sure to stay to the end of this video where I'll be announcing the topic for the next episode of everything you wanted to know. That way you can leave your comments below and I can answer them in the next episode. I've been lucky enough to keep and breed lots of bristlenose plecos over the last few years and I get asked questions all the time ranging from how to keep them, how to breed them, best feeding practices, you name it. So I've compiled a bunch of those today and I'm gonna answer them for you one by one. If you want a daily dose of the fish cave, check out the Instagram page and I just created this thing on this brand new social media called, I think it's called the Facebook but you can check us out there now too. If you like this style of video, let me know in the comments down below. That way I can keep making more of them. If you're interested in a basic care guide for bristlenose plecos, I already put one of those together and I'll link that in the description section. But let's get on with everything you wanted to know about bristlenose plecos. I keep my breeding pairs of bristlenose plecos in 10 gallon tanks. If you want to only keep bristlenose plecos or only keep two fish in a tank, you can do that as well. Realistically, I recommend you put one bristlenose pleco in a 20 gallon long or a 29 gallon tank with some other community fish, or you could stick like two or three in a 55 gallon with, once again, other community fish. Um, that's more realistic. If you're looking to breed, you can get away with, like I said, a pair um, or even a trio in a 10 gallon tank. Keep in mind that's with no other fish and that's with frequent water changes. These are messy fish. Perfect segue to them being messy fish. I run sponge filters on all of my tanks, including my Pleco grow out tanks. I recommend you don't. Um, once again, what I'm doing here is frequent water changes. I have automatic water change systems. I have sponge filters and that takes care of the biological filtration aka a space for bacteria to grow. Um, in terms of the physical waste poop that they produce, which is a lot, I have to physically remove it frequently. This is something I do, it's a business, it's a rotation, I look at it as part of the, part of the process. I recommend for you in your home aquarium, you keep them with a hang on back filter. Um, in your 29 gallon, 20 gallon, 55 gallon, a hang on back filter is fine. You could go to a canister filter, in my opinion, hang on back filter is perfect for them. I keep my plecos anywhere from 65 degrees to 85 degrees. Once again, I recommend you don't. That's because 65 degrees to 85 degrees is over an entire year. My fish for the most part are here in my garage. It's insulated. I have heaters. I have fans to help regulate the temperature. Although I do not pinpoint it to an ideal temperature, which in my opinion would be the mid seventies. If you're anywhere between 72 or four up to 76 or eight, you're going to be fine. The bristlenose pleco is fine with that. Um, like I said, they can survive at temperatures anywhere from 65 to 85. Once again, that is over the course of a year not over the course of a day or a, a week or a few hours um, changing water or changing tanks that quickly. I recommend you keep your tank, whether it has a heater in it or you regulate the temperature of your fish room, I recommend you keep them in the mid 70s. About five inches. The truth is that takes quite a while. Plecos, although they're not the smallest fish in the world when they're born, they're pretty tiny. When people first see newborn plecos, they're kind of surprised at how tiny these things really are. And it takes about three months of really good feedings to get them to what I would call a sellable size, to that inch and a half mark. At a couple months old, they're typically about an inch and a half. When they're about a year old or a year and a half old, they may be three inches, three and a half inches. In order for them to achieve that five inch size, First off, it's probably gonna be a male, and second off, you're looking at a fish that's at least three or four years old. Although this fish is referred to as a sucker mouth catfish or an algae eater commonly, the truth is they will not survive and thrive on just algae alone. Um, it's a decent food source for them, but you need to supplement their food. And I also recommend if you have an algae issue, do not buy a fish, whether it be this fish or an algae eater or any other fish that takes care of algae, 
Do not buy a fish to take care of your algae problem. I'm not gonna deep dive in this video about that, but you need to look at the parameters of your tank, potentially your lighting, your stocking, before you just go and add fish to take care of your algae problem. Green beans, right out of the can. I'm not joking, that's one of their favorite foods. Um, but we already established they won't eat algae. The truth is they'll eat many different foods. You could feed them flake food, um, you could feed them pellets, wafers, but one of my favorite foods is green beans. Out of the can, I use the French cut, no salt added. I don't think the salt added matters too much, but I use the no salt added when I can. The French cut is nice, simply because the plecos can get to that meatiness of the green bean easily. Um, you can use zucchini or cucumber. I tend to find that zucchini is a little less messy and it's also preferred by the plecos. Um, and you can look online, They're, they'll eat lots of different vegetables, uh, but it's a good idea to rotate it. Uh, also, another good food is rapashi gel food. In my experience, my plecos have not eaten plants. I have heard stories of them eating sword plants and sucking on sword plants. Um, I would say get them their greens, feed them their green beans and they won't bother your plants. If you're that worried about it, um, keep an eye out on your sword plants in particular. It depends. They can be shy, they're a little bit nocturnal, but there's plenty of times when you see them just smack face on the glass sucking their lips. I refer to them as the bats of the aquarium cave quite often. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand because they're nocturnal. I often find them like hanging upside down on pieces of driftwood. Um, so you'll see them out and about during the day. Um, they tend to be nocturnal. Um, they're, they're bottom dwellers. Typically, um, you will see them, you know, on pieces of driftwood. They're fairly peaceful and will get along with most other community fish. Like I said, they are bottom dwellers. Um, some people elect to use them as a pleco of choice in an African cichlid tank. Um, I, if you're going to go with a pleco in an African cichlid tank, a bristlenose pleco is probably one of your best bets. Although it is always risky, definitely um, make sure there's lots of hiding spots. Make sure the pleco's of decent size. Um, but I recommend a, a community tank for the most part. Um, they're good with lots of other fish. If the other fish won't bother them, they're not going to bother the other fish. You may have aggression issues between two males. So if you have um, territorial males within a community, um, if you, know, you have two males in like a 29 gallon, it may be too much. Um, you may see some disturbing of the plants and some, you know, some aggression. Now that I've been able to breed and raise a few generations of plecos myself, I kind of have a good idea of when the fish start to breed, how big they are, when, um, you know, when the males will start to show their bristles, which is the easiest way in my experience to be able to sex them. The males will get bushy noses, uh, bristles on their face and their chin. Sometimes females will develop some bristles on their chin. However, they typically will not go you know, up their face. Um, a lot of females don't get any bristles at all. Uh, when they're smaller, uh, a lot of times the faster growing fish are the males. However, that is far from a science. A male is going to generally start to show bristles around the three inch mark. Just because a fish is three inches and it doesn't have bristles does not mean it's a male. Um, that's where it kind of gets into the age of the fish also. A lot of times when you're buying a fish, you will not know how old that fish is. Luckily, since I breed the fish, I know exactly how old that fish is. The growth gap kind of, it, it slows down. The fish will grow from zero to an inch and a half fairly quickly, quote unquote, quickly a few months. But then, you know, that three inch mark, that fish could be three or so inches that a little under three to a little over three for six months plus. Um, and that fish will probably mature within that time. A fish is not going to be sexually mature, a male that is, until it's showing bristles. Um, a female will get kind of gravid and get plump. Um, and these things are going to start to happen around that nine month mark. Around that nine, 10, 11 month mark is when I'm starting to really distinctively see, be able to tell the difference between a male and a female and maybe even start to see some breeding behavior. Um, so I would say, you know, up to a year, between nine months and a year is that sweet spot to be able to really tell. And it's usually when that fish is around about three inches and maybe a little larger. But once again, that also depends on how well the fish and how fast the fish have been grown out. I do my best to grow the fish out as quickly as possible to maximize that growth rate. And it's around, like I said, nine to 11 months typically where I'm getting to identify male and female and see that breeding behavior. They breed in caves. When they're ready, 
and they don't seem to be too picky. Usually if you have a male and a female and you have them long enough, they will pair off. The male will trap the female into the cave. She will deposit her eggs into the cave and then she's essentially done and um, she'll go off to replenish, you know, because obviously she just, you know, was exhausted from carrying these eggs. She's done from the process. Now the male is left in the cave with the eggs and he will fan the eggs to prevent them from fungusing. Just like um, cichlids will tumble them in their mouth and just like we do artificially, we'll put them in an egg tumbler or some people will put them in some type of antifungal like a methylene blue to prevent them from fungusing. How bristlenose plecos do it naturally is the male will fan the, the eggs in the cave. He will sit there on the cave not leaving for about four to five days fanning. After about four to five days, you will see wigglers um, in the cave, whereas it's a little egg sac and a wiggler attached to the egg sac. Um, after another four to five days or so, for about a total of 10 days, where the dad is in this cave, typically not leaving at all, um, depending on the male, they may leave briefly or kind of come to the edge of the cave, but for the most part, that male is in that cave 24-7 for about 10 days, and that second part, essentially what's happening is they are um, eating their egg sac and becoming little tiny plecos instead of a little egg with a wiggler attached. At that point, the babies will eventually leave the cave, and after a few days, they'll all be gone, and dad will essentially go back to his normal feeding. Obviously, he's hungry, he hasn't eaten in a while, or you can remove the plecos and raise them artificially. This is by far the most common question I get asked, and the answer is no. And it's not because I'm trying to be selfish and I don't want you to breed them, but it does have kind of a, a business aspect to it, if you will. And it's also the reason why, in my opinion, you won't find breeding pairs of plecos out there that often. Whether you're searching Aquabid, eBay, it's tough to find breeding pairs um, or even sexed fish. It's not because people want to hoard up on their fish and don't want you to breed them. Um, maybe that's the case, but not for me. For me, it's because it, it's a time value of money. It's definitely a business thing. Whereas, like I just told you earlier in the video, if you didn't just skip to this, it's that it takes nine months to a year to be able to really, really for sure tell that that fish is a male or a female. So if I breed, a, if I breed plecos, and believe it or not, I only have one breeding pair of super red plecos. One. One. So it's not like I'm flush with hundreds of males and females, okay? Um, so I bred them for the first time, and it's going to take me a full year okay, to, to make sure I have a male and a female from that to breed those. And that means a full year of making sure I do my water changes, making sure I, I'm feeding, making sure I'm not a knucklehead and do something on accident and kill the bunch of fish or the, the county doesn't, you know, um, add a bunch of extra chlorinate in the water and not tell people. There's a number of things that can go wrong. So having to raise a fish up for a year um, it's just not, doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. Um, from a financial standpoint, it comes down to what I can raise the fish for and sell it at about an inch and a half. That's three months worth of work. If you want to, you know, take that and now make it a year, I'd have to charge for the amount I have to charge you for the pleco, you know, breeding pairs of super red plecos, well over $100, $100 a fish for an adult. You know, a male super red pleco, 50 bucks plus easy. The short answer is no. And it's not because I'm trying to be an asshole or because I don't want competition. I want to spread these fish out there. I want to get them in the hands of people to, to be able to breed them themselves. But it just doesn't make sense for me to hold on to fish for a year. Um, and that's the reason why I think a lot of people, you won't find pairs out there. A young juvenile pair is probably going to have about 30 to 40 eggs. You may see some clutches a little less, maybe start a little higher. Uh, but typically, the amount of eggs is going to depend on the female, and when a female is just starting out, she'll have, like I said, three or four dozen. However, once a female is a couple of years old, um, she will have usually 100 plus. I've heard stories of 150 plus. Uh, my biggest batch thus far is 120. In my experience, the smaller the cave, the better. Um, they don't tend to be too picky. I recently saw a picture on Reddit of them breeding like in the corner of nothing. Uh, my friends had them breed in like just rocks, piles. I recommend um, a one and a half inch D-shaped cave. I, every time I've put one in a tank with a pair of plecos, they have bred. That's, so I'm not, I'm not saying you can't do it in something else 
People use watering spikes. I've tried that also, but every time I've used a one and a half inch D-shaped cave, my plecos have bred for me. I keep driftwood in every single one of my pleco tanks. I don't think they require it though. I do it especially for the babies because I think it's one of the first, uh, it's like a little insider tip here, one of the first best meals for the babies is going to be like an algae or whatever that bacterial oshquash, whatever that word is that grows like biofilm that grows on wood and stuff. In my experience, that's like the best. I'll have an old, moldy, algae-covered piece of wood from a tank, throw that in a tank with some brand new baby plecos, and where is every single pleco? On that piece of wood. So no, it's not necessary, although I think it's a good place for them to feed, and even with adult plecos, they'll rasp on it, and it should aid in their digestion, so I recommend it. I remove the babies from the parents. I'll explain why and how I do it. Typically, some do get left behind, so the male and female pair have babies to raise up even though they're not like angelfish or other cichlids where it sometimes it's important to leave some of the fry behind um, with the plecos what I do is I'll take dad um, while they're still in the cave with the babies when I think they're about to leave the cave on themselves I've noticed them kind of eat up all their the uh, the egg sac um, and I'll take that cave remove it um, empty it out into a plastic container with their tank water take dad, put him back in the main tank, in his um, you know, breeding tank, and then I'll acclimate these babies into a 40 gallon or a 55 gallon grow out tank. And the reason why I do this is I can monitor the babies in these tanks and do heavier water changes than I would on the breeding pairs. And also it doesn't get cluttered. I can count the babies this way. I can label them. I know exactly how old they are, what date they were born, and when I move them into these tanks. And this allows me to keep track of everything better, allows me to put out a better fish to you, let you, lets me know what fish to pull the tank or which tank to pull the fish from when someone buys one on the website. And I've had a very high survival rate, very rarely do I lose any baby plecos. Heavy feedings and water changes. That's really all it is. The key to breeding is quality feedings, usually live or frozen foods and water changes. And the key to growing out fish Healthy and fast is the same thing. Water changes, and in this case, heavy amounts of feeding, quality feedings. Brown, albino, super red, calico, L144A, lemon, blue eye, um, green dragon, long fin of any of these, um, the snow white, which some of you may not have heard of yet. Um, all these are the same exact fish. They're all bristlenose plecos. Um, they're all just like a guppy, kind of has bred to be different color variations. Um, the ancestress bristlenose pleco, very, very similar with these, um, these different color variations. That means they will breed together. Um, typically, that's how these different ones were achieved. That's how the long fin variants were achieved. That's how the blue eye was achieved, how the super red was achieved by breeding these different plecos together. In nature, they're typically brown or different variants of that. Um, obviously, albino can occur in nature, although like a strain that's all albino and continues to produce albino is not a thing you would see in nature. That is something that has been bred over generations by hobbyists to uh, produce that strain. I am not an expert in genetics, although it does fascinate me, and I hope to learn a lot more about that one day. Um, I do know that just by looking at a fish, you can't tell the exact makeup. Like I said, an albino fish will look albino, but just because you breed two albinos, some will result in all albino, some will result in albino and chocolate. Um, I'm lucky enough that with my super red lines, it's fairly straight, it's set, whereas when I breed them, they come out pure and not muddy. Same thing with my calicos and the lemon blue eyes. Um, I have lines that were you know, set and they breed true. If you were to breed like a super red to a chocolate or a super red to a lemon. Typically, like I said, I'm not an expert on genetics. Typically that first generation cross is going to be, it's gonna look like kind of a brownish fish, but it's gonna be carrying the genetics of those other ones. So you take that fish, breed it back to its parents, and that's when you start playing around with stuff and getting different cool things. And once again, to refer back to, it takes a year in a lot of cases to be able to breed a fish. So. Think of how long it takes to develop these strains. You know, it could take years and years to figure out what you got and what you're working with. 
if you want to keep them successfully in a community setting, I recommend one in a 29 gallon tank or two or three in a 55 gallon tank, depending on how many other bottom dwellers you have, like Corydoras, they can cohabitate, but if you have a huge skull of Corydoras in a 55, maybe only go with one Brissonose Pleco. Don't get it to solve a problem. Um, get it because it's gonna be an addition to your tank. Uh, like I said, I would go with other peaceful fish, driftwood, plants, and you know, it's, it's, it's very simple. They'll eat anything, but you do have to feed it. And if you do end up with a male and a female, they could breed in a community setting, although you probably won't have a high success rate. I recommend buying five or six juveniles, growing them out in your water, sexing them. Once you got them sexed, keep a one and a half inch D cave with them, put them in a 10 gallon tank, keep them just as a pair. Um, you could do trios or reverse trios, but I think a pair is plenty. Um, put that in a 10 gallon tank. Um, if it's been a long time, you can try kind of a larger 40% water change of some cooler water, uh, maybe like 70 degree water, 68, 70 degree water, um, depending on how warm you keep the initial tank to kind of help spark them. And, um, you know, give them one option. Just give them the one option of the cave um, and kind of force them. That way you can keep an eye on them and that way you can keep an eye on and see when there's eggs in there and when they're wigglers and when it's ready to pull that cave. Because I also recommend pulling that cave and raising them out in a separate tank by themselves so you can do heavy water changes. Other than that, they're a very easy fish. That's everything you wanted to know about keeping and breeding bristlenose plecos. If for some reason I did miss your question, drop it in the comment section down below. Um, like I said earlier, we're gonna continue this as a series, so let me know if you enjoy this style. Um, what we're gonna do for the next, uh, next episode is native fish and native fish collecting specifically. So if you have questions about uh, collecting native fish, um, how to go about it, what gear, the rules, whatever, anything about native collecting, uh, drop it in the comments down below. And then what I'll do is I'll grab them and then I'll answer them next time. And you can see your comment answered on the next episode of everything you wanted to know. I appreciate you watching, especially to the end. Go ahead and check out some more fish tank antics over there. Some other videos you can check out right there. As always, stay positive and stay passionate. Smooth. Oh, we stay drinking water. How's the beard look? <laughs>